Hello, um, I'm Jeremy Krieg, and in the next six months, I guess, or maybe a bit further than that, I'm planning to build a cob house. Um, so, um, I'm, I live in Australia, and um, we have a compulsory subject in Year 12 called the Research Project, in which we have to research um, a topic or, or question and then develop an outcome and so for the, my project I plan to build this house but then I was um, uh, denied a permit from the council so I sort of legally can't build it. Uh, here is a model I made maybe five months ago so it's made out of cob and in case you don't know cob um, is an earthen building material comprised of uh, clay, sand and straw in this case, um, I just the the building site where I'm planning to build the cob house. I've been doing some excavations, and I found that the soil there was was perfect for making cob. I um, on one occasion, after I was digging around um, with a backhoe, not not with not with a spade, <laughs> um, I uh, got my drink bottle and wet down some some soil that was in the hole and then I just mixed in some like grass that was lying around and then just put it on a post and I came back um, one or two days later and it was all dry and I knocked it and it was so incredibly hard so that was really amazing because I thought I'd have to dig up um, my own clay because I found this clay sort of deposit in this other hole that I had dug and I thought I was going to have to mix that with sand it was going to be really annoying and cost heaps of money but then I found that soil is moderately perfect um, and so I'm going to use that soil and so that's what uh, this structure has been made out of so it's just soil from the site with um, straw so you can see some of the straw there um, now this uh, has been was left out maybe for uh, maybe one one and a half months um, during winter and so you can see there's a bit of erosion on the top but it's still standing obviously um, yeah so I think this is a one to six model I, it was it was scaled when I built it but I don't have my tape measure on me so I'm not quite sure um, so you can see it's like I can I can stand on this structure and it's not falling down um, you know, Here's an arch, and all that's holding this area is is the straw and the and the soil. So I can I can stand on that without it falling down. Um, and yeah, so it's it's an amazing building material, and I'm very excited to use it. Um, yeah, <laughs> uh, this is a test cob block, well that's what I call it anyway, that I made during, uh, uh, as a part of my research project and uh, my attempt with this was to demonstrate the structural properties of cob so I, I, I planned a test and I might um, put in some pictures but I planned a test where I would rip apart the cob block and I'd see how much weight it would require to do that so what I did I attached a pallet um, onto one end with a chain that would attach onto this loop here and this is embedded in the cob and hopefully I can show a picture of that too so it's embedded with um, a metal rod that's welded onto a crossbar that has all of these prongs going up so it's literally embedded into the cob uh, and then I have another one on the other side And so I attached a pallet with a chain to this one, while well, obviously it was standing vertically. And then I attached this end to another chain to the um, backhoe. So you can see the grab over there. So I attached it to that, and then I just added lots more weights onto the pallet, then lifted it up, and then I kept on, uh, I kept on adding weights, and 
nothing happened, so I had to stop. I didn't. I ran out of ways to put on there, um, and then I worked out. Uh, I worked out a a pull apart force. That's all I can describe it as, and it was in uh, newtons per meter squared. So it's sort of pressure, except sort of opposite. Well, it's the same units of pressure. Um, so I worked out that value, and hopefully I can put that in as well. And yeah, so it was a bit disappointing. I have sent sent the results to the council, but of course none of the people at the council really appreciated it. <laughs> they didn't even respond. But like, come on, I went to all of that effort. I'm a year twelve physics student. I know what is going on and I sent them this information they didn't even acknowledge it it's disgusting come on sure they can build a house after that um, but you can see this is my hand and when it was um, drying I just just put my hand on there you can see it still fits um, and the material is is incredibly strong uh, that hurts my knuckles um, yeah so it's also very sculptural and so I just just did this block free form. Uh, just um, it's actually uh, 600 by 400, and so I just I got the square out and measured it roughly, and then just built it up. And I think it, it took an an afternoon, uh, afternoon maybe three three or four hours, or maybe probably three hours. Yeah, um, and I just mixed all of the materials by hand. So I just got the soil um, from the site. And then brought it back to the house, and then got some water with some straw, and then just stomped on it. I uh, put it on a tarp, and then you fold. What you do, you fold the tarp back over, and then you um, stomp on it again. And then you open up the tarp, then you fold it back another way, and you stomp on it again. But there's lots of um, videos about that on YouTube on how to make cob. And so what I did, I just built up the block, and then added the um, forks, and then added the rest of the block. So this has also been out in the rain. Um, you can see, you can sort of see along there um, where the rain has sort of worn away at the block. But it's still pretty good and it's still like here. But yeah. Um, so this is the material that I plan to build the house out of. And this this is the design, was the original design of the house when I was doing the research project, but since then I've sort of added a few extra features, so I'm planning on building a small rectangular box with an arch, arch door out the front, so that'll just go on here, and that will be a composting toilet area with a sort of basin maybe, and then around the other side I also I'm going to have a wall that comes out as a windbreak. Um, so north is north is this way on the site, and we have sort of westerly winds um, lots of the time uh, because there's an open paddock across here. Well, there's also an open paddock across here and across here. <laughs> but yeah, lots of wind from this side, so that's why I'm going to have a windbreak in front of the door because the door will go in here and. Then uh, another addition will be over here where I will have a kitchen area. And so I'm planning on having building a cob oven in here, which is sort of, um, it's going to be the same as uh, the cob oven featured in a um, cob kitchen video, I think it's called cob kitchen. Oh, I can't remember the names. Um, yeah, but um, I might add the link, hopefully. Um, it's very cool. So it's sort of, sort of a fairly new design. It's sort of a mix between a, piece, um, a wood oven and a rocket stove. And then I'll also hopefully have another rocket stove over here. So this will be the kitchen area. And it will be made up of a series of arches. So I sort of have um, a base here and then an arch going across here and across here and across here and then back across here. And hopefully it will stand up and won't fall down. <laughs> but the idea with the arches is I'll get lots of um, uh, a fairly large breeze going through, and so I don't asphyxiate with smoke. And hopefully that should work. Mind you, the rocket stoves are 
uh, very efficient. They're like amazingly efficient. And I've built a rocket, several rocket stoves um, as part of the research project and I was just amazed at how well they worked. Um, so on top of, well as you can see here as well, I also have the arches that will go across. So this will support the ceiling and also the upper level. And you can see here that even in this model, I can, I can, I can put all of my weight on that, just on that little section there. And you can see it's not, it's like, it's not very big at all. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I have these arches going across, and then I have other arches going across from the wall onto the arch, and hopefully that won't fall down. <laughs> no, it's it's all it's all going to be a really big test, but we'll see how it turns out. And then on top of that, I'll have I'll keep on building with cob and level off the area for the upper level for the loft. And so I have a ladder going through up here, It'll go into the loft, and the loft will be about two meters high, and uh, yeah, two meters. Um, height and then I'll have the upper ceiling and then I also plan to do that in a similar way as the lower one with several arches going this way um, and then going across across like that so yes it's all going to be very experimental um, but I, I did year 12 physics so <laughs> I've got a bit of knowledge that that's a joke and we didn't even do like structural stuff, um, but yeah, it should be fun though. It should be fun, and um, so long as I be careful, uh, I don't think it will collapse on anyone um, because the, the the risk of it collapsing is only really during the um, the construction stage. Well, that's what I believe anyway, um, because after once it's it's dry, it's yeah, it should be fairly stable. And obviously before I, I live in it or anyone else, I let anyone else into it, I'd like to do some structural tests. So um, applying a much greater force than, will ever be, than it will ever need to hold to ensure that it's not going to collapse. So anyway, so that's the sort of design and um, cob stuff. Then um, across here, um, you can see this is the door frame I have built. So um, it was just constructed with um, mild steel, um, so mild steel flat bar goes up there and down. So it's just a rectangle, and then we have these feet down the bottom, um, and these these hinges I've I forged myself. So. They were just made in the forge there with my anvil and my vice over there. So I just bent them round and they were really easy to do. So I've just got to um, create the piece that goes in here and attaches onto the door. But that shouldn't be too hard. Um, then, so, so this will be part of the door frame and hopefully this section of steel won't be visible, the cob will come right up to here, right up to here, and then so you only see the timber and the hinges. Um, so that's, that's a door frame. Um, oh, and I also have these um, pieces of weld mesh across here, and as you can see, that they're, they're welded onto the frame. And so the idea with this is that. Um, the cob, when I build the door frame into the cob, I can stick the cob all through here and it can like latch on to the weld mesh, which will in turn hold, hopefully, um, hold the door up, the whole door. So um, the door that I have made um, is was made with um, a mix of Oregon and Myrtle. Um, well, it's, it's red gum, but the person who sold it to us said it was Myrtle. Um, so it's all recycled timber and uh, it's biscuit joint and hopefully I can get an image of that 
uh, afterwards, but I also have an arch that goes across here that I made um, using a, uh, an arc, arc segment sort of construction. So it's several little arc pieces that join together and they're laminated um, together. But I might show you a picture of that as well. Um, this is, while I'm at it, this is my hide. Well, it's not my hide. It's um, the hide of a steer that we got slaughtered in February. So it was one that was grown on our property. Um, and it's pretty cool. At the time, it, uh, when I got it, I fleshed it. And it's sort of been sitting around. It was flat. Um, but now it's sort of curled, curled up on itself. But it's really quite amazing. Um, I don't think it's going to... Well, it's so dry at the moment, it's not going to rot. Um, so hopefully I'll, I'll get get time to um, come in and finish it off. I plan to make a sort of rug thing without without the fur. Uh, the Not fur, what's it called? How embarrassing. Without the hair. Without the hair. So, yeah, I'll de-hair it. I was originally planning on keeping the um, hair on, but uh, I I played around with some lime, and that, of course, just made it come off in lots of areas. And when I was fleshing it, it was rubbing against the like, fleshing beam, and so it was just coming off. And so... I've decided I'll just take it all off. And I also have another one back there. That was a Hereford cow's um, hide. Uh, that was the first one that I fleshed. And you can see it's still very oily and stuff. There's fat on it in the corners. And that one's, that one's not too good. So hopefully I'd like to clean that up and then just use it as um, rawhide rope. Um, and also make some hide glue. But with this one, I'll take the take the hair off, and then I plan to brain tan it, and then smoke it. So um, for my last school-based assignment for chemistry, I researched brain tanning, and so basically, uh, it, it was fairly inconclusive my research. But basically, what I found um, was that the emulsified oils in the brain as well as um, emulsified oils and eggs, because you can use eggs as well. Um, they just help um, the collagen fibers to stay apart when they're drying, and that, that creates a soft structure. And then um, when you smoke it, um, the aldehydes in the smoke go in and secure the um, fibrils and, and collagen fibers, and they sort of... <laughs> lock it all together. They um, they lock together the non-crystalline regions of um, collagen uh, because the crystalline regions don't need tanning. Um, yeah, you, <laughs> you can sort of see how the information I found was sort of inconclusive because there's not much chemistry on it anyway. But that's what I plan to do with this hide. So I'll just um, flesh it. Um, Oh, sorry, I'll finish off the fleshing, so I might might do some dry scraping and stuff just on the inside and also to get the hair off. And then after I've done that, um, I'll brain it or slash egg it, and then I'll smoke it. So it should come out cool. It'll be like a soft sort of rug thing. And hopefully, I'd like to have that in the cob house. So um, this sort of brings close to the first sort of I guess video blog about my cob house project um, so uh, I'm I, I'm still in the exam period so I've just completed my first exam yesterday and I have three more to go so chemistry physics and math specialist so I will have them done in a week and then after that hopefully I can get started with the foundations and yeah build a house <laughs> yep okay so see you next time